Hi guys, this is Wong, uh, reporting live from the main entrance of the Bonin Sunbear Conservation Centre. Behind here, this is our uh, entrance and then actually we are right across from the Orangutan Centre uh, over there. So it's the location is very convenient. The Orangutan Centre over here and then the Bonin Sunbear Conservation Centre is over here. Car park over there. And then today I'm going to bring you a short tour to our center from the beginning all the way to the back so that you know our setting you have a better idea and hopefully one day you can come and visit our center with great uh, experience okay so let's do it right now and this is the entrance yeah so a very simple entrance although there are plans to upgrade our center our, our center our uh, entrance so that you know people will have a better viewing experience okay so there is a series of sideboards that you come that you see and this center is a work in between uh, collaborations between the Sabah Wildlife Department uh, an NGO called LEAP Land Empowerment Animal People Sabah Forestry Departments uh, and myself and this is uh, a group effort to set this center up yeah, and we have uh, rules and regulations uh, what you can do what you cannot do and then the price and so on and then uh, this is our map yeah in total we have about five hectares of land and then uh, half of this uh, five hectares uh, two and a half hectares lies within the private lands belongs to the Sabah Wildlife Department and right now you are talk, you are, we are walking, entering the center and this is the private land of the Sabah Wildlife Department and then after that, oh there's a little, you see, this is not a, yeah, they, okay, there's a little squirrels. Hi, hi. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, this is planting squirrels. Yeah. So beside bears, we are also we also have a lot of other wildlife, birds, uh, reptiles, amphibians, uh, squirrels, and so on. Yeah. So and then all oh, the whole facilities is wheelchair friendly. So up to here, you have the choice of if you are you know having a wheelchair or pushing a stroller for kids you go to this ramp if not you just walk on these stairs okay and we are going to walk on the stairs which is slightly shorter yeah and uh, I founded this center back in 2008. My background is a biologist. I first came here to study wild sun bears in Sabah in 1998, about 22 years ago. And then uh, when I study wild sun bears, I see how amazing they live in the forest. You know, a lot of the unique behaviors that nobody knows during that time. So I got a very fortunate to uh to study them so that's me okay the founder and also the ceo of this bonin sambe conservation center and this is the four-way partnership myself the wildlife department forestry department and ngo colleague and then uh, and then uh, so i uh, study wild sun bears but when i come out from the forest i see horrible thing happen to the sun bears sun bears are being kept as pets this is illegal. Sun bears are being slaughtered and eaten. This is illegal. Sun bears are being sold as pets and kept in small cages. That is illegal. So all of that makes me to founded this Bonin Sun Bear Conservation Center. Yeah, and right now we are entering the visitor center, and uh, the visitor center where is where uh, visitors come here and uh, buy the ticket and then uh, buy the ticket and and also we also have this is the ticketing powder this is my uh, 
fish tank, local fish, beautiful, beautiful nature aquariums, and uh, little shops over here, and then and an AV room yeah, over here to show video. Uh, for the, your information, we are actually closed right now because of this movement control order because of the COVID pandemic. We are closed to the public for more than 50 days now. And then uh, right outside our visitor center, we have a construction going on. This construction is going to be our new ticketing office and shops. And uh, hopefully you are done by the end of this year. And then after that, our ticketing and shops will be moved up to here and open up the center for education, more display, more information and so on. A panel of uh, our sponsor and supporters over the years. A lot of artworks uh, here as well, you know. Uh, yeah, so some of the artworks are done by local and international artists. We got our local kids draw the Sunday pictures. <laughs> so a series of stuff going on. And then uh, we also have uh, this uh, news panels, uh, information board to inform the public about what's going on. And after that, we are entering um, our our uh, close to to the uh, forest enclosure to view the bears. So again, wheelchair friendly facilities go here, and then here is the stair. And right now, we are going to walk you to the stairs, and then again, some more cyborg telling what you can do and what you cannot do. All of our cyborgs are trilingual in uh, English, Malay, and also in Chinese. And then Cyborg to show that who pay for this. This, for example, the uh, platform is funded by the Ministry of Tourism and Culture of Malaysia. And then walk up here, there is a series of Cyborgs again. More Cyborgs telling about bears, all about sun bears from the anatomy of the sun bears. Yeah, and then uh, continue to distributions of the sun bears so this series of panels are actually very useful for the visitors to learn more about sun bears obviously and uh, they can learn about what they eat in this uh, signboard okay what they eat and then what is the role of uh, sun bears in the forest very important they play important roles as forest engineers, forest doctors, forest planters and forest farmers and so on. And after that we come to our platform. Okay. So this is the viewing platform. This is the first viewing platform where visitors can see the bears from our viewing platform. But before you know let me have you take a 360 view of it that's where we come from this is this ramp is going to connect to the uh, the wheelchair friendly path and also link to our second uh, uh, platform and then another more cyborg telling about bears the rehabilitation process and then uh, what are the bears doing in the forest enclosure and then over here we have the bears so right now you know uh, underneath the this uh, wooden structure are two bears not sure you can see them yeah you can see them so these are two bears so from here the visitors can see the bears from here and sometimes the bears you know uh, walk around foraging sleeping and do all their thing yeah so right now we have two bears uh, over here. This is Pen D. In total, we have um, two and a half hectares of forest and close forest. Um, and then uh, this uh, forest enclosures lie within the Sepilok Kabili Forest Reserve. So this forest reserve is called Sepilok Kabili Forest Reserve. In total, this forest reserve is two thousand uh, is four thousand two hundred hectares, or forty two square kilometers. Yeah, and then uh, we occupy about two and a half hectares of forest 
enclosed and then uh, there are bears live in there for and then uh, in total we have 10 different pens uh, 10 different sections in this forest enclosure and each section or each, each pen we call it has a group of bears live in there okay so this is pen D uh, in total we have three out of the uh, 10 pens are open to the public the other seven pens are not open to the public yeah so sometimes we put the names of the bears over here this is a boy uh, and then uh, and then from this side, we uh, visitors can view the bears in pen C. This now is in pen uh, D, donkey, and right now we're at pen C. And sometimes you don't see the bears uh, here because uh, they are somewhere. They actually, from a distance, you can see behind that big tree, there is a bear is there. Yeah. We are very fortunate to have this piece of forest enclosures and make into our bears enclosures. So there's a bear somewhere here. Uh, yeah, poking his head out. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we are very fortunate to have this piece of natural forest with tall trees, with all of these big trees. You know, some of these big trees measured up to 50 meters tall looking at these tall trees is actually quite exciting and then in this forest reserve Sapilo Kabili forest reserve the average canopy height is about 50 meters tall and then uh, and then uh, the tallest tree over here is 67 meters tall yeah quite impressive okay so we have here for the visitors to come and view the bears yeah this is platform number one and then over at the other side, I'm not sure you have, can you see this red uh, roof structure is, is platform number, is platform B, is platform number two. Yeah, o o over there. Yeah, yeah, over there. Okay, so right now I'm going to slowly walk over to platform two and show you more bears and more things to see. Again, a series of uh, signs to tell you who is in Pen C in the enclosure C. You know, we have Fulong, Julaini, Rungus, and uh, Alun today. Yeah, and again, today you don't see any people because we are still close to the public. Yeah, because of this movement restricted order uh, caused by this uh, COVID 19 pandemic across the world. Okay, so yeah, so the uh, so, what walks are actually quite well done, I think. Uh, this is all uh, made by a biocomposite deck, aluminum stainless steel. And people can actually touch this big impressive tree. Yeah, and these trees are hundreds of years all the way to the treetop. If you are a tree hugger, this would be a great place for you to hug a tree with a lot of energy. More sideboard about uh, honey pots in the forest and uh, trees loving bears, bears that love climbing trees. Yeah, so this forest is actually very. Oh, we got. Whoa, we have proboscis monkey today. Interesting. I see proboscis monkey. Wow. Yeah, proboscis monkey, we usually don't have it as close to here. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, this forest, at the, uh, the southern side of this forest is mangrove forest where we have a um, healthy population of proboscis monkey. And then uh, they, they rarely come... Oh, it's proboscis monkey. Wow, it is proboscis monkey. Wow, this is the first time I saw, I see proboscis monkey all the way this inland. Wow, amazing, new record. Okay, so continue my video. So, so this is where the uh, wheelchair pathway come up here. And then from here, we are entering to an, our aerial walkway to the second platform. And again, more sign to tell you where we are now, what you can do and what you cannot do. Observation platform over there, observation platform number two over here. Let's go to observation platform number two. 
So here we can walk on this aerial walkway. This aerial walkway is actually quite impressive. The tallest, the, uh, the highest part from the ground is actually 12 meters from the ground. Um, it doesn't sound a lot, but it's actually when you are up here, uh, you will be uh, quite interesting to see that. And then more signboard telling about sun bear breeding behaviors. And over here is the predation, sun bears, predators and, and, and defense. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, so here is how sun bear communicate, vocalizations. You know, read something about this and then about their breeding behaviors. Yeah, very interesting sun bear growing up, breeding behaviors, baby sun bears, they make nest and so on. Yeah. And then overlook in this uh, forest enclosures. Yeah, so this is where the bears room. And then uh, during the daytimes, the bears are let out here. So from a distance, you can see there's a bears. Uh, yeah. At the. Where is it from here? Actually, is there? Is is because it's it's quite dark. Yes, there, there. Okay, so from this distance you can see a bear, and sometimes we will place the uh, uh, spotting scope around the center for visitors to look at the bears. Yeah, so from the from a distance, although it is far away, the good thing is about you know the the presence of humans did not disturb did not disturb the behaviors of the bears. So again, more signboards about sun bears. And right now we are entering the second platform. Yeah, so from a distance you can see the black object over there. That's the bear. Yeah. Okay, and sometimes they are close, sometimes they are a bit far, which is okay. The important point is that you make sure you spend some time here and you'll see them all. Yeah. Okay, so right now we are at our second observation platform and believe me or not, this morning I saw a paradise tree snake eating a pygmy squirrels just right here, you know, I can touch the snakes. Anyway, so again, this is platform two, no people, it's because we are close to the public at the moment. And then from here, this is all the bear enclosures. Yeah, right now it's close to noon time. Noon time, and uh, the bears start to look for some cool spots to rest and to hide. Yeah. So hopefully you can have the idea of, you know, our setting. And then, oh, there's the bears over here. Yeah, you can see there's a bears. Yeah, down here eating coconut. Yeah, there's a bears down here eating coconut. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and then there's another one over here as well. Yeah, another one over there as well. Yeah, all the black objects. Yeah, the sun bears are black in color. It's actually quite a great camouflage for them to uh, to hide in and to literally melt themselves in the forest right now we can see three bears over here one over here and then the other one over there and then the other one at the back of the tree okay so yeah so sometimes they are close by sometimes they are far away sometimes they are on top of the tree sometimes they are doing their thing you know and then they have all these natural forests what makes our center so special than the other sun bear exhibit or zoos is that the sun bears here live like a wild bears all of our sun bears are rescued bear okay we work with Sabah wildlife departments to rescue all of these bears that was kept as illegal pets or being kept 
as an illegal display animals in crocodile farms in mini zoos across Sabah. And so far, uh, for the last 12 years, we have rescued 61 bears by the Sabah Wildlife Department and we care for these 61 bears. And, um, and, uh, and right now, 43 bears still live at our center as of today, uh, May 11th. Um, uh, 2020 we have 43 bears and uh, you know the the Bonin Sun Bear Conservation Center uh, aims to conserve sun bear through a holistic approach that incorporates improved animal welfare education research rehabilitations ecotourisms community conservations and anti-poaching yeah this is the works that we have been doing and then uh, one of the work that we have been doing is the is the uh, rehabilitation so these bears are all being captured as illegal pets they were sent here and then uh, we grow them up you know if they are cubs we grow them up we train them uh, how to live like a wild bears in the forest and then uh, yeah and then when they grow big and grow up and then we study them we study their skill we study their uh, behaviors if we think that they can make it into the forest and then we are actually releasing them back into the forest right now I'm going to uh, show you the behind the scene tour yeah so this is not allowed for visitors I'm actually going down to the platform and trying to get a better look at the bears if they allow me to go close Okay, so actually, yeah, be, be right down below the platform right now, and oh, 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 he's running away from from me right now. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. He's a bit shy. He's a little bit shy. Okay, okay, yeah. So right now, because of there's no visitors, they are not expecting. Uh, they're not expecting uh, uh, people. That's why they are a bit scared of my presence. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So since the bears are not too happy of me being here uh, let's go up <laughs> yeah leave them with some rooms yeah so I hope I uh, give you an overview of our setting and give you an idea what are we doing over here so another series of sideboards of each of our bears okay so each of our bears have a history all of them were given a name like bears abui nano noah alund uh, male female is all here and then interestingly every bear have a unique chest patch okay that is different than than the other bears there's no two bears have the same kind of chest patch so this is like their fingerprints uh, that they have okay so some information about our rescue bear again yeah overlook at the forest enclosures yeah yeah this is pen this now the bears that was like not very happy for my presence is pen boy pen b and right now we are going down and uh, hopefully we can see more things Yeah, so during the daytimes, the bears are being let out to roam the forest. And then in the evening, in the evening, the bears are trained to go back to the bear house where they are, uh, where they are, where they spend the night over there. Okay, and you can see me. Hi, hold on, let me see I can do this. I'm using a... A selfie stick okay so I can talk like that and you can hear me loud and clear and see my face uh, yeah so overlook again you know uh, the facilities is well managed people can sit down here enjoy the forest overlook at the tall trees over here and for me as a tropical forest ecologist there is a lot of stories that I can tell about this forest this forest is actually quite amazing these are the oldest rainforests in the world 
how old is 130 million years old yeah and then uh, the tree diversity the biodiversity in this forest is actually quite amazing as well yeah here in this forest when I work in this tropical lowland deep turtle cut forest a 50 hectare plot can have up to 800 species of trees you know sometimes I giving up on memorizing all these names of the trees uh, because there's too many yeah too many and then uh, here in, in in entire Borneo there are more than 3,000 species of trees there's the squirrels yeah. and again I just know I mentioned the tallest tree in this forest enclosure is 67 meters but the tallest tree in Borneo is actually found in Sabah which is 100.8 meters tall it's only 16 meters shorter than the tallest tree in the world the California redwood okay Okay, so I'm back to uh, platform number one again, and there is a bears down here. I can see eating coconut actually. Yeah, let me go to. Uh, sorry for the shaking video. I was asked to do a. 30 minutes uncut yeah video so right now you can see this bears uh, what is he doing oh eating a coconut yeah this bear is eating a coconut yeah using his teeth to chew apart the coconut break the shell and enjoy the flesh of the coconut okay Feel free to check out our website at www.bsbcc.org.my or check out our Instagram or Facebook when you search for BSBCC or Bonin Sun Bear Conservation Center and you should be able to uh, find us. Yeah, you should be able to find us easily. And then again, my name is Wong Siu Ti. W O N G S I E W T E. You can also Google search for me or my of or Instagram or my Facebook, and then uh, you will see what I have been doing over the last many many years. And uh, and this center is actually, well, although I'm the founder, but this center was actually built and contributed and by many many people. So it's a group effort to set up the center so that people can come to learn more about sun bears, can learn more about this tropical rainforest which is extremely vulnerable right now. The sun bears is an endangered species. They are listed as ICN uh, Red Book listing as a, as a vulnerable species where the population is declining. Uh, yeah, so learn more about us. And then uh, I think the best for people to learn about the bears to learn about this tropical rainforest is that they come here they experience for themselves they see for themselves how amazing is this animals especially live in this in this uh, tropical rainforest yeah and uh, this forest is very important for us because it provides us with clean air clean water and stable climates and especially now today when we are dealing with you know, uh, local uh, with uh, global climatic change, global warming, severe weather patterns, and the protections of this forest is the answer. We need to protect this forest and also all of the inhabitants uh, of the bears. I did not cover uh, why we need to uh, save sun bears, why we need to protect them because uh, they are very, they play very important roles in this forest ecosystems, acid dispersal as a forest doctor that keep this forest healthy, as forest engineers that make nests for other species of animals, as forest farmer because they plow the soil, as, a fit, as, as food providers, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So many, many reasons for us to uh, protect them as much as possible. Okay, so 
almost come to an end now, almost 30 minutes. And then uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at wongsio, W-O-N-G, uh, at hotmail.com. And then uh, or check me out on my uh, Facebook, uh, search for Wong Siu T, W-O-N-G-S-I-E-W-T-E. And then uh, drop me a line or leave me a message. Yeah, so anything. My phone number is uh, 016-555-1256. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.